Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Trader Merlin Show. It is your... Is it Tuesday? It's Tuesday edition. That's right, because I don't have a guest on Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, everybody. Hope you had a fantastic trading day out there. Uh, some nice swings, especially if you're looking at these indexes like we talked about with Scott McCormick on yesterday's show. Russell 2000, uh, just not wanting to go down. I lost a little bit of money on the Russell, but I did make up for that significantly on the downside to the NQ today. Also on uh, Snapchat, believe it or not. Made some nice money on Snapchat. But uh, today's show, I will talk about markets, of course, but because Kevin Kevin sent in this question, more more a suggestion. He says it's coming up to that time of year where we get all these amazing deals on computers and stuff. And he said, can you talk to me about building a, a trading computer? Kind of what do we need to know? What are some of the good pieces to get? Any advice would help. So I'm gonna walk you through on today's show um, step by step what I did to build the trading computer that I use at home. But I do have to say with a little bit of an asterisk, the computer that I built is probably much more than you guys need. Um, my computer was really designed for um, broadcasting this show. So I needed something that could handle much more video capacity and running multiple threads and different things. So it's probably overkill for trading, but as I go through it, I'll show you uh, what I paid for different components, what my suggestions are for each one of those and how it might pertain to your trading. And I will tell you this, when it comes down to finding deals, my friend Katie out in Boston will tell you, it's a passion of mine to find deals. So when you look at the prices, I actually looked at some of the prices today of the components that I bought uh, in February, that's when I built this computer, um, it was it was kind of funny because some of the prices are actually more expensive today. And that's, I, I'm just a damn good shopper. Anyway, we'll talk about that as we progress through today's show. But I'm going to start off by going over the market. Since I don't have a guest, I will uh, start off by going into what happened out there today. Um, Brandon, you spent a ton of money. You spent two two k on a rig. That's a that's a lot. I mean, my computer that I have here is solid. I mean, it's pretty damn good, but we can uh, we can pick it apart as we progress through today's show. So let me continue on here. Uh, here is the, the worst performer on the day, NASDAQ, continuing its weakness. We've talked about this a, a bit in the past where at a certain point, many of my guests are feeling that there's going to be a rotation away from the big tech stocks, which are really dragging this market up, kicking and screaming, if you will. And now you're seeing a little bit of a rotation out of those FANG stocks or semiconductors or tech. So nice two-day sell-off here. Uh, we did bounce a little bit at the end of the session, but NASDAQ was down 1.66%. And just to put it into perspective, when you look at um, what Scott McCormick was talking about on yesterday's show, you have the Russell 2000 up 1.91%. That was number two on our list, up 1.91%, looking really good. And again, he felt like this was a very positive sign. I do as well. It's just, it, it, I'm a little bit baffled on the timing of it because here we are at all-time highs and, and the Russell takes the lead to the upside. That seems a bit strange to me, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, Ru Russell was up 1.91. I'll start down to the, or go back to the bottom. Bitcoin kind of unchanged on the day. Um, I actually expect there to be a bigger pullback after this gigantic move from you know 13.8 up to over 16,000 in just a couple of days. Um, I did expect there to be a bit more of a sell-off, so I'm very happy that it's holding at right around 15.4, pretty much unchanged on the day. Now, the other piece we've been talking about is how the yields are spiking, and this is the price. What you're looking at here on the 10-year would be the price of the 10-year it's falling aggressively. And, and again, that has to do with the auctions that came out today. So the auction numbers for the US um, were showing 0.96% yield, a jump from 0.77 to 0.96. This may not seem like a lot. However, that's a pretty significant jump in just a couple of weeks to go almost 25 basis points higher. Now, what that means is this 10-year will probably continue to sell off. Today was down just points, uh, 0 0.07, but the last couple of days have been an aggressive sell-off, which means yields are rallying, and that could certainly pose problems for our economy going forward. Now, S&P, this is including after hours here. You see the daily chart. Uh, that was a beautiful shooting star that closed yesterday. I really thought you'd see some follow-through to the sell-off. You know, we started selling off in the after-hour session last night. I was watching that one like a hawk, and then uh, it really started to look much, much better. Let me show you the five minute here. I know most of you probably saw this already, uh, but we'll go out a little bit. There's that aggressive sell-off we saw yesterday. Markets close and continued to drift down. Uh, and then really, I guess you could just say they've been bouncing sideways for the S&P. It's really the Russell that took a huge bounce in the after hour session. Uh, that said, this is still a 40 point range that happened in, in the late hours last night, both up and down multiple times. So great moves in the after hour, not a ton happening out there today. All right, now we go to gold, which is showing a nice update. Thank goodness gold needs a little bit of an update after what happened uh, yesterday. 
Gold down uh, up 1.16 percent. Probably best if you look at this on a daily time frame. Just got slaughtered yesterday, which you didn't really talk much about. I'm um, surprised we should have talked about commodities. But uh, you know, a little bit of an update. Nothing overly noteworthy. It's kind of right near those bottoms we saw from mid September and late October. All right, I already mentioned Russell 2000, which uh, I still have a short position in. Um, and I still, I'm still short NASDAQ and I'm still short the Russell and I'm still short Snapchat. So we'll see how those ones pan out tomorrow. Um, Russell 2000 looking really good. I mean, the way it re rebounded last night on the five minute and the after hour session was impressive. Here's the five minute time frame of it. And I'll zoom out so you can see last night. There was that big sell off. Now, of course, you guys saw that lock limit up yesterday. Well, it ripped up higher aggressively sold off and then right around 9 p.m. Pacific time last night had a great rally. It went from uh, call it I'm going to call it 165 or 1650 uh right, well, let me rephrase that. Uh 16 I'm going to say 1700 It was actually down below. 1695 is where it bottomed out at, uh, but rallied aggressively all the way up to high of 1750 So you're looking at almost a 55-point move um, in the late hours last night before the markets even opened. Then it sold off aggressively. I mean, this thing is just really, really showing a lot of volatility out there. So if you guys are futures traders, uh, this one could be a widow maker here if you're on the wrong side of it. That was number two. Number one, crude oil. Getting back up into that sideways consolidation range, you see some really big jumps like we had one here just a little while ago on crude oil um, also late in the or early in the morning right around 4 a.m. there was another really big spike up but it's the daily that interests me you know we have been making these slightly lower highs for about the past month and today we're right back up into those highs that we've established for the past month so if we can manage to get above uh, you know there, there might be some optimism out there I wouldn't get too excited yet we are right into that area of supply however it's already hit it three four five six times the more you hit the supply level, the weaker it gets and the more likely it's going to rip to the upside. So that's where we stand, guys, for the crude oil side of things. I'm going to do a little bit of rundown through those top seven markets. Of course, if you guys have any feedback, let me know what it is, and I'll hopefully get to that as we progress through today's show. All right. So today, um, I'll, I'll go to the viewer's question, and, and Kevin has been very helpful uh, for me over the years, as many of you guys have, has given me suggestions and kind of saying, hey, you know, this you might want to look at these things or these things, etc. Uh, I thought I would just dive right into this question. He sent this in today, so forgive me if there's typos on the slides that I built because I was scrambling to put this all together, the beauty of doing live stuff. Here is the question. Kevin says, hey, Merlin, just wondering if you would be able to share some info on the best three-screen setup. Just making sure that my new PC is on point. Looking to build one since the ones out there are very expensive. And I want to know if there are certain things that you feel I should have system-wise. Uh, how many cores or what type of Intel processor. Right there, you're already put pigeonholing yourself, Kevin. You said Intel. I went with AMD. I'll explain why in just a second. So let's start off by looking at, um, I guess, first step if you're building a trading computer is saying, which software program are you going to be using? If you are using a downloaded platform like TradeStation or um, Investool, not Investool, how did that, that name get in my head? Um, Interactive Brokers or you even have some Ameritrade, Thinkorswim. If it's a downloaded software that you install on your computer, generally you wanna have, make sure you have some system resources to handle that. If it's like Click, and Click is gonna be all web-based, then you don't really need to have a super fast, robust, amazing computer. What you need to have is more RAM. And the good news is RAM is dirt cheap nowadays, so you can find yourself a fairly basic computer and get a lot of RAM and you'd be okay handling because you're simply using a browser. Now, there are other considerations which we'll walk through as I progress uh, in this kind of explanation of things, but again, it really depends on what platform you guys are using. Now, I'm um, the worst of both worlds. Not the best, the worst because I use install platform and I use web based for example the computer I'm using for the show um, obviously has the software that I use for the show but also has TradeStation uh, installed on it I have a couple other platforms I have um, I have Thinkorswim installed on this platform I have Street Smart Edge installed on this platform so I have a few different applications on this computer now I used to have another trading computer but this computer has kind of become my I don't know it's become my trading station so I, I, I I'm kind of 
I shouldn't do that, right? Normally what I recommend is if you have a trading computer, you just use it for trading. And the reason is sometimes you download an Adobe Photoshop or you have Outlook on your computer and those resources may conflict, right? They may start to take over uh, other resourcing and could create conflicts within your computer. So here is just for an example, I wanted to show you this. I downloaded this today from TradeStation and this is just what they're suggesting for their um, their clients that are using the installed version of TradeStation. So these are the basics, right? You're looking at, they want a, the minimum, a dual core Intel or AMD at 1.5 gigahertz processor. A 1.5 gigahertz, I think you can actually buy a box of Cracker Jacks and they'll give you a 1.5 gigahertz processor. It just seems like really, really low to me. You know, nowadays you can get something much, much bigger than that. Um, here is the other piece that I, I noted, eight gigabytes of RAM. guys. RAMs, you can go from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes of RAM for probably an extra 20 bucks. Spend it, get yourself more RAM. Um, now they say as a minimum, get yourself a 5400 RPM drive. Again, this is how quickly your computer is accessing the data that it may need if it's stored on your computer. I don't even recommend using a spinning drive, right? Don't get your standard you know, 5400 or 7200 uh, RPM drive. Go solid state. You know, they're, they're 100 bucks for a decent one. I'll show you the one I bought here as well. But, um, you know, solid state drives to me are the way to go because there's no moving parts. Everything starts up faster. And what I do is I install all software, all programs on that drive, right? So on my system at home, guys, I have a, a solid state one gig and then I have a two gig backup. And that's an old typical RPM, 7200 RPM drive. Um, and what I do there is all programs are installed in the solid state. Any kind of data that I might be pulling, I, I put on the other drives. So for example, the Trader Merlin show. The software I'm using is on the solid state drive because I needed to access that extremely fast and that's the solid state. But all of the video files, the graphics, the backups, the recordings, the editing, all the stuff I do for Tilly show is all in a, on this two gigabyte backup drive. Now I also um, have a two things. Number one is I mirror or I ghost my computer, meaning I create a copy of it and I back that up once a month. I encourage you all to do that as well and I'll talk more about that as we progress through today's show. But yes, yeah, solid state drive would be the way to go for me. Uh, I really wouldn't even use these spinning ones. They always end up crashing after a couple years and then you lose everything and you're like, son of a, are you kidding me? All right, um, what else in here that's that big of a deal? Nothing, nothing really. Internet browser, Internet Explorer, really? Come on. Get rid of that garbage. No one uses Internet Explorer anyway. Okay, so I'll start off by showing my computer. Sorry, my, my it needs to be dusty. I, I looked at the picture. I'm like, God, is it that dusty? It's amazing how much a picture will show you um, <laughs> all the dust in your house. But here is the station I'm actually using to broadcast this show. So this is, I'm actually, it's kind of weird. I'm staring at myself, staring at a picture of what I'm looking at right now, weird. Um, but this is kind of how my triple monitor setup is at home, guys. You can see my left monitor is the, oop, it's actually wrong. This uh, far left monitor over here is the daily time frames. I just have it on a five minute right now. Um, a four hour and then on the right monitor you see I have hourly and then I have the 15 minute. On the main screen here is where I have my five minute, I have my different watch lists and different tabs. I also have my positions and open orders. So to me, this is more than enough for me to look at whatever security I'm looking at from a variety of different angles. And it's all linked up and everything like that. So it's important for me to be able to see that much real estate. And I'll talk about the video card here in a second. It's very important that your video card can handle this type of stuff. It's it's really a big deal for me. So anyway, that's a picture of my screen. Shut up. Don't give me a hard time because my desk is dirty. So this is where I get kind of boring. I, first thing you need to do is figure out what kind of box you want, right? And, and I'm not a type of person that says, ooh, I need the fancy good looking box. I could care less. I wanted something that hold, held everything that I wanted it to do, all the components, and just said, all right, which one's gonna, gonna give me the best price? Now, I'll show you a resource. Um, yeah, Apple computers are good looking, but Zoo says the new Apple computers are good, really good looking, or looking really good. Yeah, I don't care. Don't use Apple stuff for trading. I, in most platforms are not built for Apple. It's been something since the very beginning of I got into trading, they said, don't use Apple products because they're not built for trading. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've known a lot of people that have used um, Apple's products over the years, and a lot of times the software companies won't even support Apple. 
bizarre, I don't know, whatever, stick with PC for now. Um, if it all goes web-based, then it doesn't really matter, does it? You could just use your web applications. So uh, I'm not uh, interested as far as what the thing looks like. It's all about form and function. Yes, I'm with Brendan. Apple, bleh, give me a break. Okay, so I bought this one. And again, I'm showing you the actual prices that I paid. And this is for uh, the, the computer I built that I believe is overkill. Now this price here, this is not overkill, right? This is just the box. I bought the Corsair Carbide 175, cost me $66.99. And again, the only reason I'm including these prices is um, I would encourage you to beat my prices. Good luck, go for it. There's a couple that are already cheaper and I'll tell you which ones those are. The box, it's up to you, right? You can go micro, whatever. Once you do that, and this is where your next step is so critical. And, and guys, we're coming up to Black Friday holiday season. Some of the stuff is gonna be so damn cheap so cheap, I would encourage you to build yourself a new computer. Why not? And now's the time, right? And for some people, 500 might be too much. Other people, 1,000 might be too much. It all depends on your personal goals. To me, this is a business expense. It's a, it's something I literally am writing off as part of a business. So I'm okay to spend a little bit of extra money to make sure that the tools I have are bulletproof and gonna do exactly what I need them to do. Um, all right, so here's what I bought as my motherboard. Now, again, your motherboard, you have to make sure that whatever motherboard you buy is compatible with that box, right? Sometimes certain motherboards won't fit in this. So I'll show you a resource where if you are gonna build one, you can start just typing in the components and it'll tell you if everything fits and is compatible. It's awesome, you better be doing that. So this motherboard fit in it, it's the uh, Asus Republic of Gamers B450F. I bought a gaming one. Yeah, mine has a clear panel too, but I mean, I don't, I don't really use it. It's underneath my desk, so mine has a clear panel on it. Uh, I think if you look right here, this whole window right here is all transparent, slides out, a couple screws, but I don't care. Um, yeah, so I can watch the electrodes go back and forth. Not that much of a nerd. So this is the motherboard. The reason I picked this one is because it fits this Ryzen, um, Ryzen chipset. Now, I'm walking through this one, guys, in order of importance, in order of importance. Motherboard to me is extremely important because the, the slots on this also need to fit the components that I'm gonna show you here in just a second. So I went with this Ryzen, Ryzen 5, 2600, six core, that's not core X, it's just six core, I just had a typo there because I was moving too fast. 99 bucks. Um, it's interesting, if you go out right now and try to find this one right now, you it's hard to find for 99 bucks. I'm gonna just type it in, Ryzen, oops, R-I-Z-E-N, five, 2600. Here is, I'm looking right now, I paid 99 bucks. Here it is, you're looking at, oops. Um, here's the page, you're looking at 149, 150. Best Buy has, uh, and that's a motherboard, um, but the Ryzen 5, it's still going for 150, 139. I got mine at uh, Micro Center. Micro Center had a great deal going on and I could have gotten the Ryzen 6, which is a little bit better, but it really didn't, I didn't need it to accomplish what I needed it to accomplish. So it was actually perfect for me to find this Ryzen 5. Um, great price on it, 99 bucks. Uh, I actually, I'll have to say, I love it. I actually was a total Intel person. The reason I went with this one is after reviewing many things about streaming and broadcasting live video. You guys might remember when I first started this back in February, frames were dropping, crap looked all weird. It's because I was using Intel and I had an i7. Um, most people were saying that the reason this Ryzen is so good, this one has six cores, so it's basically processing six times the, the data. You could probably go more than that, but you don't need anything overkill. Ryzen 7, there are no six. Oh, there you go. So maybe, but bottom line is they're always updating it. I think if you got a Ryzen 5, you are doing really good. You got plenty of what you need. It's extremely fast. I cannot be happier with the AMD product. I really, really has been one of the most stable computers I've ever owned and I put it all together myself. So um, that's the AMD Ryzen 5. Next is this piece. Now this is probably the most critical. You won't be able to run two monitors with a standard motherboard, right? It's just not gonna happen. Usually you can get um, two monitors out of it. It'll have like a DVI output and it'll have maybe a, uh, a DisplayPort output. So this is the video card that I have. It's the NVIDIA EVGA GeForce GTX 1600 Ti. Could they talk a lot about different names? I mean, God, just, just call it the video for, I don't know. Too much wording on it. So anyway, um, this one is pretty critical. And the reason it was critical for me is it's more for doing the show. 
okay? This show, I need to have a lot of graphic processing power because I'm streaming HD video, I'm, I'm compressing all sorts of different things, audio files, different input streams. You might not need something as advanced as this. This is a pretty, I would say decent, it's not the highest end by any means, but it's still pretty good for somebody who's just using it for trading. Now, if you're looking for trading, what you wanna do is make sure that you can run three videos, uh, three, well, let me take that back. Depending on what you want to do, you wanna make sure your video card can support that. I'll give you an example. If you wanna run two monitors, most motherboards, stock motherboards, a cheapo one that probably cost you, you know, 70, 80 bucks, will run two displays. You'll usually have a DVI and a display port. Those are two. If you want to run something like I have with three, you need to make sure you, you have enough capability to do that. Now this G4 1600, I run all three monitors out of that one video card. On the back of it, there's three ports, a DVI, a display port, and an HDMI. And I have not had any issues with this whatsoever. That said, um, you know, you might not want to be spending 250 bucks on a video card because this is really designed more for gaming so that better resolution and things like that. Remember, if you're trading, you're looking at price charts. You're not playing, you know, Minecraft or Halo or whatever these damn games are that are super uh, resource and graphic intensive. So you might not need this one. This is probably where you could cut corners. If you're using dual monitors, see if you can find a nice motherboard and you have to talk to your, go to a micro center or a, um, you know, one of your computer stores, Fry's maybe. I do micro center, but they're usually better and find out which motherboard you can get away with that'll give you two display ports. If you want four or six or eight, you're now looking at buying multiple video cards that will support all of that. One of the reasons I also like this video card, and this is something to think about, is that inside of this, it actually has, a, I think this is six gigs. This has six gigs of display power. Um, so pro, display power, of uh, video processing. So instead of using my computer for resources, it's gonna do all of that internally. So it really helps save my system any sort of processing uh, battle where one application is looking to take from the CPU and the other one's looking to take from uh, the video card. Most of the stuff I'm doing is all gonna be locked into that video card and that saves my computer a lot of resources. It doesn't even, I wish I could show you my screen right now that I'm streaming with. My CPU usage, running three monitors, I've got trading applications open, I'm streaming live full HD video, plus like five or six browsers, I got PowerPoint open, I'm using 3.3% of my computer's CPU. The reason for that is a bulk of it is being used by this video card. So to me, if you're doing a lot, video card is pretty damn important for you. All right, moving down the line. Um, here's the big one, and I think this is gonna be a biggie for everybody, RAM. Random access memory, that's what it stands for. And if you're using an installed software like TradeStation, it's its good to have more RAM, not critical. Um, the price that you saw on the screen there, 134 for 32 gigs of RAM. Could you get away with 16? Absolutely, but it's not that much more to go from 16 to 32. These, uh, the RAM I chose, it was on sale. It was a decent price on it. The guy recommended them. Um, and 32 gigs is more than enough for what I need. It's a little bit overkill if you think, uh, if you uh, think about it. However, again, this is a business expense for me and I wanna make sure that I'm not ever gonna have an issue with system resources. So the 32 gigs of RAM, I know that if I'm running my different online streaming trading applications like Click, that there will never be a problem with any sort of hiccups with data because I don't have enough RAM. So I just wanted to, I'll tell you the difference here. Let me just real quickly look at, um, let's see, G skill um, D3200 RAM and let's see if I can go 16, 16 gigabytes just to give you an idea of what this might cost. If you do the 16, um, it's about anywhere between 60 and 80 bucks. So I am paying a bit more, but it's not double the price. Right, eh, it gets close to double the price. Go with the 32 if you can. All right, I know, I'm, I'm I like, I like to, <laughs> Frank says we've been waiting for this episode for so long. You know, I'll tell you why it's been so long. Um, I really wanted to bring the, the chief technical officer from OTA over because he's just brilliant. Um, this guy knows inside and out systems and resources and technologies. And I really wanted to get him on the program. I'm a nerd, like I'm, I'm kind of geeky, but I'm certainly not the amazing uh, tech guy that he, that he is. So uh, hopefully we'll get Jeremy on in the near future. But for now, you guys are stuck with me and you guys can thank Kevin because Kevin sent to that question and I was like, all right, 
I'll do the show on computers. So I threw this one together off my system. Um, let's see. Do I have an auxiliary power unit? Um, yes, a UPS, an uninterrupted power source. Yes, I do. And, and it actually really does come in handy. Um, there's been a couple of blackouts here every now and again. Something, Somebody hit a tree, knocked over a pole, computer went down. Um, it gave me enough time to back up and save everything. But remember, the internet goes down, I, I can't trade anyway. So it was just basically data that would have been lost. Um, there are other times where it's just a temporary shutdown and it comes right back up and my data is all still there and everything is connected. So yes, I have a UPS. What I keep connected to the UPS is this. I keep my internet modem, I keep my PC, and I keep my center monitor connected to the UPS. I don't want to put everything on it because then it will drain that battery faster. And there you go. Uh, let's see, what are your experience from frozen or slow screens with TradeStation? That's probably a system resource issue. Um, I think that there's an issue with people using you know, a 16-bit system versus 32 and 64 software installs. That might be the issue. To be honest, TradeStation is a legacy. Um, don't talk about Civic. I, I, I still own Civic. Um, TradeStation is a legacy platform, meaning it started off really good years ago. And instead of rewriting it, they just put layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of, lo of code. And now you have this Frankenstein type of platform that has a lot of little bugs in it. Um, it's unfortunate. I, I think that maybe the new, was it, version 10 may have, um, they started to build some, rebuild some of that, but it has never been a ground up rebuild. And that's one of the things we loved about Click is we had the opportunity to go from the ground up without using anybody else's source code. Let's do it fresh from, you know, code piece number one was all handwritten for it. So. Yeah, TradeStation has issues there. It may be your system issue. The challenge is if you call TradeStation and ask for help, usually the help's not there. All right, what else? Uh, what we're needing out, while we're nerding out, what do you think about Civic, Merlin? Uh, I own Civic, but I agree with Brandon. It's it's moving into the uh, the shitcoin status. It, I, it was an interesting project when it first came out, so I have a, I don't know, I don't know how many I have. I probably have about, I think about $1,000 worth of it. That was about it. Okay, let's go to the slides again. I want to keep on going here. Um, RAM, obviously important, especially, again, for those of you that plan on using Just Click, yeah, RAM is going to be where you want to go, right? It's, it's definitely go with the, uh, with the higher RAM if you can. Okay, next. Um, this is the part that I love. These, this is a solid state drive. I mentioned I have a solid state drive. It's crazy when you look at it. It's just this little wafer thing. Uh, I got the one terabyte. I thought about going with the two terabyte, but the price of two terabytes got really expensive. And I thought, you know what? I just need this to run my basic applications. I want to put my main programs on there and all the data. For example, TradeStation is installed on my on the solid state drive, but I have all the data. So any workspace layouts, anything like that is on the second backup drive. So I'm splitting those data pieces there. It's kind of a weird little thing I'm doing, but it makes it easier. Um, these PCI Express 3.0 are extremely fast. I mean, the time from startup to, from, from a dead stop to full screen and everything up and running on my computer is probably about, I'm gonna say 10 seconds, maybe 15 on a bad day. Yeah, it's more like 10 seconds, maybe even less. I mean, it's just hit that button, the little uh, Asus thing pops up and then all of a sudden my desktop's there. It's great. It's incredibly fast with that PCI Express 3.0. What else do I got for you? Um, again, you could go bigger than this. I just think your, your second drive, which is this one here, is the one that I got. Um, my cost was $69.99. It's the small one. It's the micro. It's almost like for a laptop. Uh, 2.5 inch, 7 millimeter. It's 2 terabytes and it's just where I keep my data storage. Now, let me just tell you here... I use a software that backs up that one terabyte drive in its entirety on other drives. So I have it backed up to this one, which is the Seagate, and then I also have a dis uh, uh, a removable or a portable disk. Let's see if I let me see if I grab it right here. I have one of these bad boys right here. It's still dusty. Um, I use one of these, and once a month I will go and I'll do the same thing. I will. I use the term Ghost. It used to be Norton Ghost was a software. Now it's not. Um, it's it's some other. The software I use I think is called. Uh, Mercrium, M -E -M -E, Macrium, Macrium. And I just back it up onto here. So the reason for that is this, and this is where I'm gonna get some, some, some hate mail from you guys. On this computer, I do not have virus protection. I just found that when I had virus protection on my old trading computer, it would, it would slow things down sometimes, and I was attributing it to that software. With this program, or with this computer, I'm not opening 
anything that's unfamiliar. I don't go to any websites that I know are not big time uh, websites. So it's kind of risky to to not have a virus protection on your computer, but I don't. Um, and, and I basically have a one month backup. So if I lose data, I might lose a month worth of shows, but I've got multiple backups of things. I'm not worried about anybody hacking this computer and getting my private keys to my cryptocurrencies because nothing is saved on here. Um, <laughs> Code just saying, no way. I know, I know, I know. People are like, what? No virus protection? Well, you know, oh man, I was just going to go down the path of a horrible analogy, but I'm not going to do it. For the sake of uh, viewership, I'll hold I'll, I'll, that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I back everything up. I have multiple backups of it and I do that once a month. I try to do it on the first of the month. It's, it's easy. Um, well, I think it is easy, Zoo. Zoo says, I don't think it's very easy to catch a virus these days. It is um, if you are going to sites that are questionable. You know, so if you're searching for something and you click on different ads and banners, that's usually where you're going to get the viruses. Uh, I think you will all agree that the, the extent of spoofing that you see in emails. I, I got an email yesterday that looked so unbelievably legit from Apple, and I actually just recently made a purchase on Apple, and I was like, wow, that's interesting. And of course, you dig a little deeper, and you can read the email address, and it's like q6152.apple.fakestealyourstuff.com. You know, it's, it's that weird, but you know what? That's not what Apple's gonna do, so you know, you just never know that one. Um, I did use Cas uh, Casper Sky, but it's Russian, comrade. This is the Russian platform. I do not trust the Mother Russia. America has taught me to not trust Mother Russia. I'm kidding. Um, I had that on my old computer, but you know, 100 bucks a year, all of a sudden I become cheap. Let's see. Um, do I use a VPN? I, when I'm traveling, I don't. I know. Um, I just have never set one up, so I, I should be using a VPN, especially if I'm traveling. Um, it's been on my list to set one up for my home as a test just to kind of get around some of the things and limiting that certain uh, ISPs are doing. But I, um, if you can, I would definitely say use a VPN. There's a reason for, <laughs> uh, for VPNs. Uh, but I don't use one right now. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the, the, some of the tricks that I use when I'm traveling. I haven't really traded much from traveling recently because I haven't done a lot of traveling internationally, but I hope to in the near future. So let me get through the, the last couple components here of this one. Um, this one is not necessary at all. I actually don't even think it serves a purpose. I bought it because I knew I had a pretty, you know, a, a fast, hot CPU with a lot of RAM and I figured my computer would get rather hot. I don't think that this is even needed, but I did buy this one just as a little bit of... Um, extra cooling for my computer. Now the only other thing you really gotta take consideration is this bad boy, which is gonna be your power supply. But literally everything I showed you right here, um, out the door was I believe 1100 bucks. 1100. And I know that's a lot of money for some people, but you could right away, you could cut some serious costs. Um, for example, let me just go see if I can pull up tile size here so I can tell you where you might save. Um, you could probably save yourself 60 bucks on the RAM by going from 32 down to 16. You could probably save yourself $100, maybe even $200 by getting a different video card and, and saving there because you don't need this, that kind of video power. 99 bucks for the, for the, uh, the chipset, that's great price. I don't care what chipset you're getting. I think it's worth it. And remember, the, the chipset's the brain of the whole system. So I, you know, your motherboard and your chipset, I would say, don't skimp and get the $20 motherboard. Make sure something's pretty good. Um, and Frank says 1100 ain't bad. For what I have, I think that's really, really good. Um, and then the monitors, guys, nothing special. I've got some LGs. I think I got them on sale for 89 bucks. Three, I think these are 23 inch, 21 or 23 inch. Um, LG monitors. Um, actually, the, one of the most expensive things I have, I bought years ago. It's this Ergotron three monitor stand, but don't buy that stuff. You can go on to Amazon. You can just type in three monitor stand. You'll see some really cool models out there. Or if you want four or five or six. Uh, in my office at OTA, I have a six monitor stand and a computer all built for that. But you know, you can find creative ways to make your own stands if you need to. So that, um, that my friends, is your builds for your computer. Are there any questions with regards to maybe systems or pieces that you are putting together? Um, I, Kevin's not on here today. He's probably in, in some mastermind community room because he's entrenched in there, but I'm, I'm sure I'll get some feedback from him after he watches the video or listens to the podcast. What else do you guys have? Um, we're going to take advantage of adult, uh, adult site premium package. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, no, I don't do that. That's that's you want to get viruses? Go to these, uh, you know, these uh, adult websites and just start clicking around. Yeah, um, I use any virus on my tower, but there are protocols I keep right, and I think I think that's it. Look, okay, I'm gonna get somebody gonna hate me. It, it's like it's like safe sex, right? Abstinence is the greatest way to not catch anything, right? So that means you're never going to go out to the internet. Well, come on, that's not going to happen. So you, you you wear protection. You go through different sites. You know that are safe. You're not going to go to crazy stuff where you're most likely to get viruses and stuff. Speaking of viruses, I may do a show on Thursday that you guys aren't going to like. Um, there is somebody out there who is now going at on Twitter, at Trader, M-E-R-L-I-I-N. And there's a couple others that are... Imp um, creating replicas of my exact replicas of my profile and they've blocked me of course um and they're all trying to get people to give them money and promoting a specific company out there which i may do just the title of the show on thursday is going to be clickbait nothing but tags to get people to watch this show and basically call these people out if you mean a bunch of scams scam artists anyway anyway so and if you ever see somebody that's a trader Merlin and the name spelled wrong, do me a favor, just report them. You can just you click on the three dots there and you can report them and say that they're an imposter. You know, get rid of those people out there. Um, all right, Chris says cheaper than an entry level Mac. Yeah, oh gosh, Macs are super expensive. I mean, Macs to me are way more expensive than they should be. Yes, you're getting a nice stylish looking PC, but do I really care about style? I don't. I mean, I don't even look at this. The PC is underneath my desk. I don't look at it. It's as long as it runs solid. That's all I really care about. And I'm and I'm pretty sure deep down, that's all you guys would care about either is make sure that this thing is never gonna uh, falter on me or randomly shut down or have my monitors flicker or give me internet issues. I want stability. <laughs> uh, let's see what else do I got here in the question department. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, ba -ba -ba. All that stuff you back up, you can't find the course you made. Well, unfortunately, it's OTA's crypto course, so I would be copyright infringing should I post that course. I know, Jeff. I really want to post that video. I know some of you have been asking about it, too. Uh, it's so weird. It's, it's a great course, but for some reason, they just don't want me to post it. I, I don't get it. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah? Still owes me top 50 picks, huh? Uh, all right, let's see what else I got. I have a computer already. This sounds nice, but it will be a good idea j to just build it. Well, uh, Sherry, um, Jerry, I don't, I don't know. It depends on what you have, right? If you got an i7 and it all, it's working fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So if you got something that's working well for you, you're not having any issues, you know, then, then stay with it. You might want to up upgrade the hard drives or think about backing things up because the longer you have those RPM drives, the standard spinning ones, they're more likely to crash over time. You know, those are only set to last a few years. So we'll see um, how long they last. Solid state, solid state tends to last a lot longer. So, you know, maybe you make that change. Maybe you, you back it up and then you buy a solid state drive, put your info back there. So now you're a little bit more stable. But if something's working well for you right now, then there's no reason to, to rush out there to fix it. That said, I'm pretty sure that most of you would be able to go out and use the components that I showed you here and maybe something a little bit less and probably get better deals than I got on Black Friday. I was kind of forced to do this back in Jan in February, right? I did the show with my trading computer, my trading computer that I have here, which was, I think it's an i7. I think I had, I had eight gigs of RAM on that one. Worked great for trading, great for trading. But as soon as I tried to run this show and I was having buffering issues and missed frames, I haven't dropped, I can see right here on the bottom of my screen, I have not dropped one frame since I built this computer. And it takes, you know what, a good, probably two hours to assemble it and then doing all the software install because you got to install Windows or whatever operating system you want to use, uh, that takes some time as well. So unfortunately that took me a little bit longer than I wanted, I had some issues with installing Windows. Of course, that always seems to happen, um, but that's it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, medic, I trade I, I trade phone only currently because I love to lay down and relax when I trade. Personally, when I sit on the computer, I feel like I need to make a trade instead of the trade coming to me. Okay, I like that. For me, the phone's a bit challenging because you have such limited real estate, right? It's 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 smaller. Uh, what you could be doing is you know spend you allocate yourself an hour to sit in front of your computer, 
uh, set up alerts in all kinds of zones, whatever those zones may be, and then you could have um, also alerting you and sending those alerts to your phone. To me, that's a great um, a great way to do it as well. So then you don't have to sit in front of your computer all the time as well. Question, why don't you just back up to the cloud drive instead of another portable drive that can eventually fail as well? Just curious. That's a good one, Lewis. You know, I, I don't know. I'm... I'm skeptical of uploading things to the cloud. It's it's my data, right? And to me, if I upload to the cloud, then that cloud could easily be hacked. At least here, I know that my system, is it, it, its ability to be hacked is up to my level of security. Um, and also, I'm maintaining that. So to me, I don't know. I, I like the idea of me controlling it all. I, I don't really do the cloud backup on anything. And like Brennan says, cloud can be hacked, yeah. And any sensitive data should not be put in the cloud. I agree. You know, all those uh, risque pictures that you guys take and upload to the cloud, it's all available now. Anyway, that's it. It's really a matter of personal preference. Um, I'm a skeptic when it comes to information being elsewhere out of my control. When you're in the cloud, that's, um, <laughs> that, that's somebody else's info at that point. All right. Uh, any other questions for me? And, and it, Lewis, if that doesn't bother you, that's fine. Use the cloud. It's, so much, it's probably so much easier for you to do that anyway. But um, I don't know. I like doing things in manual ways you guys have seen throughout the years on this show. Um, all right. Well, let me, uh, I'm going to just show you the economic accounter for tomorrow. And I'll, I'll let you guys send in some questions here because I'm sure you probably have some. Uh, hopefully, that was informative for many of you. Again, that's, ex that's the exact system I'm using, and it's overkill. The system I have, I, th I believe, is overkill. You could probably build a great trading system with could handle three monitors and probably get out the door for, oh, 650, 700. I think you could probably cut those kind of corners. So let me show you what's happening for tomorrow while I wait for some of your guys' questions to come in if you have them. Um, actually, let me show you today. I thought this was kind of interesting. I, I'm still looking at uh, issues around the world, and I highlighted in red here the European um, economic data that came out today. Their ZEW economic sentiment numbers that came out are dropping quickly, right? So all of a sudden, there's this looming uncertainty and um, I'm not say sense of dread, but look at these numbers. If you're above 50, these two numbers here below the red box, uh, let me grab my, my tasty pen over here and so I can circle some stuff and scribble. You notice that the ZEW economic sentiment right here came out at 32.8. Well, if it's above 50, that means that people are somewhat optimistic. Obviously, you want to get towards 100, and that means that people are really screaming optimism. This tells me that it, not only they're not optimistic, they're pessimistic, and that pessimism is growing. The closer it gets to zero or moves further uh, below 50, that was a pretty bad piece of data there. And it's also for Germany, which most people say that's the dog that wags the tail. So you're seeing this sentiment really dropping quickly in the European Union as well as Germany. Now for the industrial production numbers, look at this one. I know it might be hard to see. Uh, Italy came out last month with a 7.4% industrial production number. Now, it's Italy, guys. This isn't the company, or the country that runs the world. They might run the, the, the pizza, pasta, and birra moretti, però non controllo tutto, eh? Uh, they went from 7.4% gain to a negative 1.9% in the previous, uh, sorry, expectation. They actually came out at negative 5.6. So that's a 13 percentage point swing. That's a really, big, almost 14 percentage point swing. Really big swing to the south side here for Italian industrial production. Now, we'll see other numbers coming out for the European Union here soon, um, but that is certainly not a good sign seeing industrial production drop so quickly, as well as economic optimism and sentiment really plummeting over there. Now, for the US, this was good news. We went from an 8.22% delinquency rate on mortgages to 7.6. It's still, in my opinion, incredibly high to think that 7.6% of mortgages are in delinquency. That just seems really, really, really high, um, but it's still an improvement. Uh, our economic optimism numbers dropped as well. We're right at about 50%, which means people are just shaking their heads going, I don't know, which way is it going to go? Uh, I already pointed this one out here, which is the 10-year. We jumped to 0.96. I think I had a chart of it up earlier. Let's see if I can find that one for you, but that's pretty much it. Uh, tonight, you also have, in just a matter of uh, a couple of hours, New Zealand will be doing a rate announcement. I, if I'm not mistaken off the top of my head, I think they're at 25 basis points, and expectations are that they're going to stay the same. So for anybody who's trading anything to do with that uh, NZ, you might be seeing some moves here shortly. All right, what else do I got for questions? Uh, ZD, USD. Let's see. Will trading hours be different tomorrow due to Veterans Day? No. 
I don't, I don't think I don't think there's any changes for Veterans Day. Unfortunately, should be should be a day off. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Well, I don't see other questions coming in. I think we already got it. All right. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you guys got something out of that one. Uh, and again, thanks Kevin for the the question. I really wanted to uh, dive into that one because I thought it might be beneficial for everybody out there just to see not just you know what a computer is, but one that I'm actually using. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yes, Kevin, your question, it, you sent it in earlier and I was thinking, what am I going to talk about on the show today? And you sent that question. I went, you know what? I think that's a great idea. So I'm, I'm hoping um, you'll enjoy it. And Kevin, it, just so you know, I, I showed the computer that I built for this show, which is it's probably overkill. And as we went through, I kind of um, outlined where are some of the areas that you may not need to have all of the different you know expensive pieces but I built this one for myself and it's more than adequate I mean I I'm patting myself on the back actually I cannot tell you how happy I am with this computer not because not just because this show has run flawlessly since I bought this computer or built it um, but also I've never had any issues with my trading I can open up 30 applications that are really normally intensive and it's not pulling any CPU really anything from my CPU that's largely in part due to the the graphics card because the graphics card is doing so much processing internally as opposed to using my computer. If I didn't have that NVIDIA video card, um, I have a CPU reader right now. It says 3.6% usage on my CPU. Most of the processing right now for the show is going through that G, uh, Matrox G1600 or NVIDIA G1600. If I pulled that off, and did a normal, went through the motherboard, my CPU usage would probably be closer to 50%. It would really be, um, really bumping it up. Uh, the microphone, yeah, it's called a Yeti Blue. It's a Yeti Blue microphone, so that's uh, that's the name of that one. And it's funny because the camera, it's just an old Logitech I had. I, I bought this really nice camera with all the, you guys um, over the years, or, or since the start of the show, you guys you, you were sending a whole bunch of money um, through the chat, and I was like, great. And I bought a camera with that one, and I, I haven't used it. I wanted to set up a whiteboard over here so I could do kind of on-the-fly drawing, um, but yeah, just too many things to do. All right, what else we got? What's the microphone? Yeah, Koji, I answered that one, no problem. Um, can I add a monitor to a PC Windows 10? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, one of the nice things about, and this is a good question, so I'm gonna show you this guy here. Um, this is my computer that I'm, I'm literally broadcasting on. So this microphone that you guys see right here, this is a Yeti Blue. Um, this is the little Logitech, which surprisingly good video. Um, it's not really what I should be using. Um, if you with TradeStation, this is just a desktop. So each one of these screens is just a separate desktop. So if you're using um, TradeStation, you just open a desktop, move it to here, and then you save that. This is desktop one. Oops, okay, wow, that was a pitiful one. This is desktop two, and then this would be desktop three. So I can add any workspace. So you have a desktop and then you have a workspace. Desktop is the whole screen layout. And then um, a workspace would be just a tab down here at the bottom right there that you know you can have five or six different workspaces in a desktop. If you're using something like Click, you could just open one browser and stretch it all the way across. So you could start adding a whole bunch of different ones. Or you could open up separate browser windows here. And you could have on each window a separate browser if you're using something like Click. To me, that's... Um, the, the best way to go with regards to multiple monitors. Use that real estate. You know, the one thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to put it, spend so much money on your trading computer and get six or eight or 10 monitors as I've seen in the past. Because then what happens is it's just overkill. And to be honest, I believe it slows people down. It, it creates paralysis through analysis. When you have so many things to look at, you're like, you'll miss trades, you won't make trades, you talk yourself out of stuff. So um, I... I think three monitors has been my sweet spot. I love it. I actually would love to sit here. I actually enjoy trading off my iPad and my uh, iPhone. Those are Apple products, but I'm usually using the app that's built by those various people. Uh, the two dogs, that is uh, Yoa, which is my dog, and that is Clint, which is my friend Katie's dog in, in Boston. Um, I believe that these are, tw I think they're 21 or 23, somewhere in there. I don't, I don't remember. I've actually bought these years ago. They're like 100 bucks a piece, no big deal. All right. Um, I need a car monitor. No, it's funny if you read uh, Market Wizards by Jack Schwager, which I may have over here in my book collection. He actually he interviews some guy. It's a forex shirt. I couldn't remember which what he which one he was or his name, but the guy has monitors above the urinal in his house. First off, he has a urinal in his house. 
that's impressive. But in his bathrooms as well, while you're sitting on the throne, he has a monitor that you can watch. I just think that at a certain point you need to get away from, from the trading stuff. So no, I'm not gonna have uh, I'm not gonna have monitors in my bathroom. This is it, you know. Take your phone with you if you need to, but other than that, leave it alone. All right, uh, first of all, you just confirmed I got the right, right two monitors, one for my house and one for traveling. Yeah, absolutely. Three monitor gaming laptop. That's essentially, uh, Batista, that's kind of what this is. It's just not a laptop. You can get multiple monitors from laptops. Obviously, you lack the flexibility with the laptop, right? Your The ability to plug and play different components is not going to work, right? So you're not going to be able to have... Um, to buy that NVIDIA G1600 video card and just immediately upgrade your system. Upgrading in a laptop is way harder. Way, 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 way harder. All right. Uh, yes, you know what? Trade in one, uh, trade in one 55 inch TV. You could do that as well. The resolution is not going to be as good. I mean, that's one of the things that's a challenge there with the resolution on TVs is not as good as it would be with uh, with uh, individual computer monitors. So. But different folks are different folks. I know people who do trade with giant monitors, and that's it. Just got one big TV in front of them. Cool. Good for you. Just make sure that your computer can run it and push that signal out there and get the best resolution that you can. All right, guys. Um, that was going to do it for me for today. I'm looking at the calendar just to make sure our guest for tomorrow. Yeah, it is David Warner. Lo and behold, David Warner will be our guest tomorrow. Um, probably won't be talking computer technology tomorrow, but we'll be talking... If he streams, sometimes when David streams his video, we get a little bit of audio issues, so I'll hopefully circumvent that one. Um, anyway, David Warner will be our guest for tomorrow. We're going to be talking Forex, global currency markets, which are great because we're seeing a lot of um, changes to our regime here in the U.S., which means maybe some tension with the U.K., maybe some issues with the European Union, and therefore we've seen those currencies start to move a little bit. Plus, we've had some rate announcements. So it'll be a lot to talk about with David Warner. If there's something you want me to talk about with uh, David Warner, Send them on in. Go to TraderMerlin.com. You can send in questions, comments. Um, of course, uh, you can always post down below the video. That helps me out probably the most. And of course, if you see somebody on Twitter who's sending you messages saying, hey, I'll get you a 20% rate of return, or hey, give me $1,500, I'll turn it into 3000 by the end of the week, report them. It's spam. You guys know damn well I would never do that to you and solicit uh, stuff through your inbox. It's something I just would adamantly against. So don't do it. Uh, report those people if, if they're an issue. Get them out of here. I guess they say flattery is the greatest. Uh, I forget how that goes. Nah, I forget. Whatever. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Have a fantastic trading day. Hope tomorrow is. I'm kind of hoping for a nice big down day tomorrow. As you guys know, when it's, when it's short, I tend to do really, really well. So I'm just hoping for a sell off. Anyway, happy trading, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow with David Warner. Take care.